Jew and a, uh, also a Greek. His dad was Greek. Mom was Jew. Uh, he really realized that the law was written simply to point out that we need a Savior. We can't save ourselves. So all of the wonderful celebrations and stuff that the Jewish people did was all in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. Let me know when you're ready, Danny. We ready? All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for its ability to produce power and life in us. For we are brought forth by the word of God. Lord God, the kingdom is built on the word of God upon good ground. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that we're not born of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, born by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Father, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Bless those that are with us today. Those that couldn't make it, Lord, let them know that no snow formed against them will prosper. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. Romans chapter 8. Now, if you've ever studied the scripture, Romans 7 is interesting because it starts out in Romans 7, we're going to be in 8. Romans 7 about being married, and as long as you're married to your spouse and the spouse lives, then you're bound by that law to be married to him. But this is really not referring to marriage alone. It's referring to that the law was fulfilled in Christ. And then once Christ fulfilled the law, those that are Jewish people are not no longer married to the law. They're not obligated or bound by the law to fulfill it. Why? Now they need to fulfill their walk in Christ. And the Bible says if we be, we be followers of Christ, that Jesus has fulfilled the law. And so what Paul is doing is he's beginning to say that all I learned when the law came and the law was fulfilled in Christ, I learned that I was a wretched man. The good that I wanted to do, I couldn't find myself doing. And the evil I didn't want to do, I found myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of sin? So he picks up in Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from the New King James. So it's got the first part in there, which I like, out of the Texas Receptus, which means uh, um, that they left this part in. If you've got an NIV or another translation, it leaves this part out. So just follow along verse 1, Romans 8. Therefore, it is therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Now, when you see the phrase, in Christ Jesus, it just means like if you're in your car, you're in your house, you're in the church, you're covered by that object. So when you're in Christ, you're covered by Christ. You're silhouetted by Christ. Okay? So there is no condemnation to those who are silhouetted by Christ, that are living in Christ, who do not walk according to the flesh, the five physical senses, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, the law of sin and death is called the Old Testament Torah, or not Torah, but uh, uh, Ten Commandments. That's the law of sin and death. It points out that we cannot save ourselves that we cannot be our own Messiah, that we cannot even live up, even though we're a good people, live up to the standard. It takes God in us, God around us, to carry us into that realm of the Spirit. For there the law of the Spirit in life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, it couldn't save us, couldn't t- make us completely righteous, in that it was weak through the flesh, because the flesh kept getting in the way. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on the account of sin to condemn sin in the flesh. So like I said a long time ago, and I will say again, God is dealing with us in obedience and in love, but he's not dealing with us with condemnation. Amen. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. John 3, 17. Are you still with me? 
that the righteous requirement of the law, the Ten Commandments, might be fulfilled in us. You see that? You don't have to try to fulfill the law. In Christ, in us, is fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You see, when we walk according to the flesh, we feel our condemnation. We feel our inadequacy. We feel like we're not going to make it. But thank God it's not by feelings, it's by faith. Amen. So in verse 5, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds or their mindset on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And that's what takes time. It takes time for us to switch out the old fleshly person and allow God to become the, the, new creation, the new creation inside of us so that we rise above the dictations of the things, of the mindsets of the flesh. Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. Now, the word carnal means carnivorous or ruled by your flesh. Uh, I like to call it meathead because if you're carnal, if, if you like to eat carnivorous things like meat, like I do, you know, then we can be like a meat eater. For to be carnally minded or fleshly minded is death. Death there is the Greek word thanatos, which means causes us to separate our thinking and our ability to fellowship with God, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. We've been reprogrammed in a negative way in our past life, and it takes a little bit of time to renew our mind to the things of God so we can begin to agree with the things of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So, so then, and this is talking about Christian. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So while you and I are fleshing it out, we're not pleasing God. But when you and I are, are humbling ourselves, submitting ourselves to God, doing what God asked us to do, we please God every time. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Say amen. If indeed the Spirit of God dw dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. You're not born again. You're not saved. Okay? And if Christ is in you, the body is dead. Because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life or quicken your mortal bodies through the spirit that dwells in you. In other words, God says, you don't have to give up on yourself. God will quicken you. God will make you righteous in Christ, and that will take over your life if you stay consistent and follow God. Amen. And then verse 12, it says, Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. If you will live according to the flesh, you will die. You'll eventually separate from God. But if this, by the Spirit you put to death the doings or the deeds of your body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, this is an interesting scripture. It actually was in my uh, sermon note from uh, if the snow hadn't been here. The word, if those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. The word sons there is the Greek word weos. It's spelled with an H. And it means adult sons and daughters of God. So when we're led by the Spirit, when God is dictating to our steps, dictating to our mind, helping us walk in and out through the day, we are mature because it's no longer us that is walking, but it's God who's walking in us. So the way we become mature immediately is by yielding to the Spirit and allowing Him to begin to order our steps. The steps of righteous men and women of the Lord are ordered by God, aren't they? Amen. Even though man plans his way, the Lord directs his steps. 
All right. So as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So I'm going to stop here for just a minute. Remember in John chapter 3, there was a religious man that came to Jesus by uh, night. He was afraid to come by day because of his peers. He was a teacher of the Jews. He was a teacher of the law. But he realized that what he had and what Jesus had were two different things. Jesus had the goods. Jesus was the Messiah. And Jesus did miracles. But all the things that they did as Pharisees and Sadducees, nothing was the result because it was done by the works of the flesh to try to find the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah. So he comes to Jesus and says, Master, I know that you're a call of God because no man could do these things except for God be with them. And Jesus says, except a man be born again, cannot receive or inherit the things of God. And, And Nicodemus, being a Jew, he says, what, do I get born up into my mother's womb again? He says, no, what is born of water and of the Spirit can inherit the kingdom of God. Then he says something really strange. And I kind of want to just say it because it's in my sermon for next week. He says, the wind blows where it listeth, and you can hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it comes or where it goes. So is every man that's born of the Spirit. What is he saying? He's saying that when we let God direct our steps, Satan can't figure us out. I'm going to say it again. When we let God direct our steps, Satan can't figure it out. But when when you and I are pretty predictable, when you and I are pretty much scheduled out, Satan knows what our next move is. And he often can block us or frustrate us or throw something in our path. But we're to be led by the Spirit. Why? Because being led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is so much farther ahead of the devil and far smarter than anything the enemy throws at us. We need to practice and to be exercised in being led by the Spirit. Somebody say amen. Verse 15, Romans 8. He says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. In other words, you didn't receive all of this to come back under the law and under the bondages of don't do this, don't do that. You better watch the Sabbath. You ought to watch the full moon. You got the full moon, the blood moon, the red moon, the pink moon. And look, look, it sounds like I'm making fun of that. All that's really good, and there are wonderful things and pictures of God. But, you know, we don't base our religion over moons. We're not the moonies. Can you say amen? We base it over the son of the living God. You still with me? For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. If you get a chance, uh, Colossians chapter 2 talks about don't go back under the beggarly elements a bondage of this world, the following of Sabbaths and and holidays and doing all this. Don't let other men tell you what or what you cannot do, but rather let the Lord direct your steps. Someone say amen. But you receive the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. Now, I'm going to spend a little time here, and then we'll close on the spirit of adoption. You see, you know, Jesus said to Abraham, And as Jesus called Abraham out of the land of Ur, out of the Chaldees, out of being the first, you know, pagans, and he said, and Abraham was crying out, there's got to be a real God. And so God shows up and he says, I am El Shaddai. And the word El Shaddai means I am all supplying, all sufficient, will never cease from giving you love, care, and good things. That means that when we're bad, God is good. When we're not so good, God is good. When we're even good, God is good. When when we don't even know where we're coming and going, God is good. We've got to start looking at the God part and not our ability to follow God. Are you with me? Because God said that even if a righteous man shall fall, God will lift them up. How many times? Seven, eight times. Are you with me? So the adoption here is very important because Paul realized that he was a born Jew and Gentile. He was the fairest and the 
the head of all of the Jewish people. He was like ahead of his class. Yet he had to learn to follow Jesus by adoption rather than just by faith. Now, I don't know about you, but if you have ever been adopted, I know there are some that have, they have to learn to trust again. They have to learn to, 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 to open their hearts and let the people that are in charge, mom and dad, the adopted parents, come on into their life and begin to help them grow and develop and help them uh, learn. The same with you and I. We have been regrafted into the olive branch or excuse me, into the olive tree. Um, we are wild branches. We are adopted children of God because we weren't born Jews. We got born again. So God now has to teach us through a period of time and having our senses exercised to allow God to show us how to trust him, how to follow him, how to believe in him, how to have faith in him, and how to allow him to direct our steps Someone say amen. And that takes a period of time. That's why we see some Christians, when they first follow God, they're, they're just as carnal as they can be. They don't know the difference between up and down or left and right. They haven't learned these things yet. That's why we need to be patient. We need to be loving and merciful to them. Why? Because they need to see people that are examples of walking with the Lord. So they have something to pattern their life after. Amen? Moms and dads, you're to be good examples at home. Stop yelling at each other. The kids aren't going to believe you. Say, oh, me. So again, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again. Now, what you need to realize, and then I'll close with this, is there were these group of, of Jewish believers that were saved at one time or wanted to be saved, but they never let go of the law. And I want to share this with you. You might not know this. You might know this. But if you try to follow the law and follow grace, you're going to frustrate the grace of God. And what's going to happen is everything's going to shut down. Paul writes in Galatians that you have fallen from the grace of God. The grace of God is unmerited favor that everything that Jesus did was for you and I. Therefore, by faith in Christ, we get everything that Jesus accomplished. But if we still try to follow the law, still follow the dictates of the law, still try to pattern ourselves after the law, then it pulls us out of grace and under condemnation again. So therefore, we feel like we're not accepted. We feel like we're not living up to snuff. And you know, that is a lie. Because God says, he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, if you got something out of that this morning, give the Lord a big hand clap.